Good evening, everyone. When I first pitched Scary Stories for Young Foxes, I sent this Neil Gaiman quote as an argument for making the book really scary. I personally believe that if you are keeping people, young people, safe from the darkness, then when the darkness shows up, you are denying them tools or weapons that they might have needed and could have had. Little did I know just how prescient that would be. I don't need to tell you that the darkness has shown up, and our young people, who are living in a country where over 120,000 people have died, who can't go back to school for fear of increasing that number, and who are at least hearing about innocent people, especially black people, being brutalized and even murdered by police. Our young people are living through a literal horror story. I started out wanting to write a spooky romp, but the people in my life challenged me to make it something more, to make it something that would give young people those mental tools and emotional weapons that would ha help them survive a time like right now. When I was little, I fell profoundly in love with the haunted installments of the Bernstein Bears. Bears in the Night and the Spooky Old Tree taught me how to make scariness lyrical and how wonderful it feels to return to the watercolor light of your treehouse after being lost in the dark, dark woods. I have my mom to thank for those books and a love of reading. I eventually grew out of these relatively toothless stories, or pretended I did anyway, and one day found myself leading a storytelling troupe with a good poet friend of mine. We were putting on a Halloween show, and I encouraged our authors to come up with stories that were so terrifying the audience would leave with white hair. Three days before the show, I presented my own gruesome splatter horror story, and one of the members, a tiny, sweet Mormon woman named Annette Weed, looked at me with such a horrified expression that I immediately scrapped that story. Thank you, Annette. So two nights before the show began, I reached into my heart, and I found the Bernstein Bears waiting for me. In those two nights, I wrote a short story called Seven Little Foxes in the Twisted Antler Wood about fox siblings who wore little deerskin boots and bought apples from the corner store and one night ventured a little too far from home. This brought me to a place that I like to think of as cozy horror. Sure, the stories were chilling, but the fox kits ended up back in their warm orange light of their treehouse where their shutters were dispelled by their mom's lick on their cheeks. The story got such a good response that after I became a full-fledged writer, I decided to pitch it to my agent John Cusick as a full book. John is kindness incarnate. He's so kind you don't even realize the moment the scalpel enters. What you've done here, he said, is a hat trick of publishing no-nos. Short story collections don't sell. Scary stories don't sell. And anthropomorphism is basically a death knell. I took John's advice. I knocked down the walls between the stories and turned it into a novel in disguise. I added a snuggle for every snarl, and finally, to soothe any anthropomorphism jitters, I tried to make the story as scientifically accurate as possible. The book started to evol evolve from cozy horror into National Geographic horror. Parallels presented themselves. A rabies outbreak was a zombie story, a fox that draws young vixens into its territory and eats any males as a vampire story, and a white-furred thing that's camouflaged by the snows was a ghost story. Much more interesting. Thank you, John. Fox kits very often do not survive their first winter, and that left me with a question. Just how scary should I make this thing? Christian Trimmer to the rescue. Christian encouraged me to make the stories way scarier, and even had some horrifying suggestions of his own. Thank you, Christian, for raising the bar and for providing the insight and patience to make the forest deeper and the fangs sharper and the soft moments much more comforting. The rabbit's blood is on your hands. Even after all these changes, I knew I wasn't striking to the bone. Fortunately, I have a friend named Corey Hunt who will answer the phone whenever I call and talk to me about pop culture. I recommend that everyone get their own Corey. Corey and I spent hours on the phone dissecting the horror genre, and he helped me realize this. We tell ghost stories to help deal with our past. We tell vampire stories to keep ourselves and our loved ones from being seduced into darkness. And we tell zombie stories to prepare ourselves for pandemics, but more importantly, to know what to do when you can no longer recognize your neighbor or when a figure you were meant to trust has become a threat. I wish that we did not need these tools today. I wish that I could just write spooky romps for the fun of feeling chilled and having those chills licked away or smooched.
but scary stories have to do more. They have to mean something. And everyone I just mentioned helped me do this. They helped me lift the book out of cozy but pointless horror and give it teeth so the reader would know just how serious this business of living really is. Thank you to my brilliant poet friend C. Chambers who helped refine the language, my fiance Hannah Garrett who wears her heart on her sleeve and showed me where the book could hit harder. Thank you Rebe Rebecca McGregor for sending me an article that claimed Beatrix Potter was not the animal lover we all perceived her to be. Thank you to Jun Yi Wu, who found the perfect balance between Stephen Gamble's illustrations and story scary stories to tell in the dark and Aesop's fables. Thank you to my entire team at Holt. This would not have happened were it not for you. I am incredibly humbled to be awarded alongside authors whose works are so vital right now, at which I read with relish and fear and hope. Alicia D. Williams, Jasmine Warga, Kwame Alexander, and Jerry Kraft, your works changed me, and I am in awe at how they are changing the world from the young ones up. Finally, thank you to the Newberry Committee. I still can't believe this is real. And special thanks to Krishna Grady, who not only led this committee, but told me what my book was about. In an interview after the awards were announced, she said that Scary Stories for Young Foxes was about resilience. I hope this book does give kids resilience during this time when the world feels lost in the dark, dark woods. I love each and every one of you, and I will see you back in the treehouse.